Good afternoon, everyone. It is Soul Sunday once again with Ruby and Allison. What's up? Yeah. I just want to say I'm loving this new um, setup so much better than Facebook because you know Facebook be tripping. So while <laughs> I'm talking about Facebook tripping, let me just go ahead and start sharing it from my phone and make sure we don't have any <laughs> issue while I'm talking. But I had to do that too. Of course. This is Soul Sunday, and pretty much Soul Sunday is where we basically try to end the week on a high note and start the new week on an even higher note, because I know for some of us, some of us have the case of the Mondays, and we just basically need to throw that whole idea out of the window unless you're going to change the whole idea behind it and make it more positive. That's right. But... Um, for this week with, uh, oh, wait a minute, let me turn the volume off on my phone. Okay. For this week's episode of Soul Sunday, um, last week, Allison and I talked about the chakra system in more detail. And this week I wanted to focus on making the connection between the chakra system and mental and emotional wellness. So before we really get into that, I just want to talk to our replay viewers for just a moment. If you happen to catch this on the replay, just make sure that you comment your name and where you're watching from below so we can thank you or so um, I can go back and thank you for watching and tuning in. And also, um, what I want you all to start doing is letting me know one thing from our live video that really resonated with you or that um, you really connected with. Because I want to start making these Soul Sunday videos more engaging and we really want to start getting your feedback and um, understanding what it is that you want to hear or what you like and constructive criticism. criticism. Hey, um, Robin, thank you for tuning in. And um, that's pretty much it. So to go ahead and get into this, for those that don't know me who may be new to my um, timeline. My name is Ruby D. I'm the goddess entrepreneur and the soul speaker. I'm the author of the Goddess Grind series. Um, I'm the chakra expert, entrepreneur, author, and speaker. And yeah, I do some everything. So I'm just yeah. going to leave it at that and I'm going to let <laughs> Allison go ahead and do her thing. Peace and blessings, everybody. I am Miss Allison Denise, representing Be Still and Move, the organization designed to help you heal, grow, and live beyond that relationship status by becoming better, not bitter, and enjoying your life along the journey. I'm a speaker, a teacher, uh, uh, I'm some everything too, a radio personality. Uh, I think I threw actress in there <laughs> mm. a couple of months ago, and I did not expect that ever in my resume. But more importantly, I am all about relationships with yourself and with others, how to heal, how to grow, how to live, how to be content with where you are, regardless of what that relationship status is in your particular life. So I'm thrilled to be here just like I am every Sunday. I can't believe it's been five months already. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up this morning. I was like, wait. <laughs> Daddy, we've been doing it that long. We just find stuff to talk about. <laughs> but it's okay. Because we could be talking about something else that's, that means absolutely nothing, but we're not. Exactly. But to go ahead and get into this week's topic, if you want to know more about the chakra system, I definitely recommend you watch last week's episode. Hey, Red. Hey, Tate. Um, yeah, go ahead and get your word, and we'll see you later. Um, let me see who else is watching um hey tara um oh let me do say if you happen to have any questions or comments please make sure you place those in the comments um be sure to share the video like the video give us some hearts give us some likes and um that's pretty much it for right now but um uh, again, I recommend if you want to know more about the chakra system, definitely watch the show from last week. I'll actually post the link below or either just share it on my timeline or you can go to my YouTube channel and watch them. But um, with that particular episode, we went over each of the seven chakras and we touched a little bit on the business chakra system. But just to give a little bit of an overview 
um, our chakra system is our energy body and our um, that consists of seven main chakras, the root chakra, the sacral chakra, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, third eye and crown chakras. And each of those chakras are associated with a different or different mental, emotional, spiritual and physical aspects of who we are. And um, the key to those is being able to find balance. Of course, you're not going to be balanced 100 percent of the time. But the more balanced you are, the more you're able to be happier and experience peace in your life. And you just learn how to effectively manage your feelings and your emotions and your thoughts. Um, with the chakras, they can be underactive or overactive. And with that, or depending on what um, status they're in, whether they're overactive or underactive, then they are indications of different things that may be going on in our life or um, different um, situations that we may have to address that we've just haven't taken the time to address. Now with um, me wanting to make the connection between the chakras and mental and emotional wellness, um, I feel it's important that we learn how to, um, first of all, we learn what the chakra system is. And in addition to learning what that chakra system is, then we can also learn how to um, manage our emotions and our thoughts effectively so that we don't get that build up. And then that leads us to having unhealthy emotional, I mean, unhealthy emotions and unhealthy mental states and unhealthy thoughts that can lead to um, mental illness such as depression, stress and anxiety. So I'm just going to kind of stop it right there and I'm going to let Allison go ahead and give her feedback um, on what she thinks about the topic. So Allison, go ahead. <laughs> well, I am still uh, studying all, all the chakras and uh, the information related to those. But one of the things that I think I've mentioned a few videos back that I did start doing was looking up the spiritual roots of certain illnesses and diseases after the death of my mom from cancer when no one in my family, to my knowledge, had ever passed away from that condition. And so that's what led me to start looking at the different uh, reasons for spiritual diseases. And a lot of times we don't really have to go to the drugstore, the doctor, or our medicine cabinet when we're not feeling well. It's usually a sign that our body is telling us that something is out of whack. And so one of the things that I love about studying the chakras is that it when you take the time to study, and I won't beat a dead horse, but if you take the time to take a test related on finding out how your chakras are, you'll find that a lot of the things you're doing are not related to some kind of a mental condition or a diagnosis. It's just simply that something in you is unbalanced. And if you take the time to do that, and this is definitely related to some mental illnesses, and, and in no way are we saying that you should not seek mental health. And, and nowhere are we saying that you should not seek a doctor's assistance. Don't come sue any either one of us. <laughs> but right. what we are saying is sometimes it can't hurt to just make sure that who you are, all of your emotions and feelings, and we are all just cellular structures and organisms. And set, that's what we're made up of. And when something isn't right, it does affect us. So it can't hurt to take the time and just say, okay, and who I am as a person, all of my cells, all of my energy, all of the things that I've been given, are all of those things out of whack? Are they balanced? And if you find that there's something that's not balanced, along with checking spiritual roots of diseases, I think some people will find that they can self-heal much more than they believe they can. So that's why I'm excited about today's topic. Well, thank you, Allison, for that great commentary. <laughs> but um, one thing that I want to, well, actually, you know, we've talked a little bit about the chakra system. And now I want to touch on a little bit about what mental wellness is and what emotional wellness is. As far as mental wellness, mental wellness is what I consider, um, uh, what did I say? I don't remember my exact wording, but it pretty much covers the full scope of mental healthiness and um, mental unhealthiness. Mm -hmm. And that does include um, mental illness. That includes you having negative thoughts throughout the day. You are allowing um, 
people and situations to put you in a funky mood or in a negative mood. And that also includes being, you know, in a peaceful state, being happy, being able to effectively control and manage your feelings and emotions. So your mental wellness is just the full scope of everything that um, um, encompasses what mental health is. Um, and at the same token, when we are discussing emotional wellness, it's pretty much the same thing where you're emotionally unhealthy and everything in between up until the point where you're, you're emotionally healthy. And when we think about emotionally unhealthy, we think about those feelings that lead towards a depressive state or lead towards, you know, being stressed out, whereas on the emotional healthy side of it, you allow yourself to be happy, you allow yourself to experience um, positive, um, a positive idea of what love is instead of a negative idea. We all know that all love isn't healthy. We all know that all love isn't beneficial. And we have to learn to tell the difference between being mentally and emotionally unhealthy and, you know, being mentally and emotionally healthy. So, um, with that being said, we will go ahead and get into, wait, where's my agenda? <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to um, the chakras. Um, the root chakra is pretty much our survival chakra, and it's associated with us being grounded, feeling safe and secure, and knowing what our purpose is. Of course, that's not the full umbrella of everything that falls under the root chakra, but um, it's enough for you to get the idea. I would definitely suggest um, you doing some more research um, yourself. But um, for the sake of this video and trying to stay within our time constraints, um, the root chakra is associated with you being grounded, feeling safe and secure, and you knowing what your purpose is. Now, um, a lot of times we don't realize it, but a lot of us don't know what our purpose is or we really haven't started living in it, but we never make the connection between us not knowing what our purpose is and us not being able to effectively manage our feelings and emotions. So if you, for example, um, are not in the best living situation, you're not making enough money or you're not able to take care of the basic needs in life, then, of course, that's going to affect you mentally and emotionally. And within that, you're going to be so focused on just surviving that you can't even focus on, OK, what is it that I really want to do? What is it that I really enjoy doing? Mm -hmm. And so therefore, if you don't if you've never figured out what you really want to do and what you really enjoy doing, then how can you you know, really be happy? Right. So I'm just going to leave that question there and I'm going to go ahead and let Allison you know, chime in with her two cents. Well, actually, I know she probably got about four dollars and fifty cents, but <laughs> I'm gonna let her go and spend her money. <laughs> you know, the biggest thing is we have to work towards having a life of freedom, and with the the grounding with the with the root chakra allowing you to feel safe and secure putting yourself in a position where you're balancing that chakra so that you can feel safe and secure and know your purpose. One of the ways that, you know, it's, it's imperative to, to do that is to just allow yourself some freedom. Like Ruby mentioned, you know, if you're not in the best living situation, you don't have a lot of money, you don't know how to get out, all of those things can make you feel trapped. And when you feel trapped, your mind is so focused on just not being trapped that you're not focusing on, how to be free. There's a difference between not being trapped and being free. Right. And one of the things that I, I, I really strongly suggest with people is that you, you know, start to prioritize what's really important to you. Some people won't be happy until they're in a 6,000 square foot home and have a 12 car garage. And, you know, they think that that's going to be the thing that will make them feel free. But it's not the 6,000 square foot house. It's not the 12 car garage. It's the fact that you can afford it, which also means that you don't necessarily need those things either. You just want the freedom associated with a particular level of financial security. But it all goes back to feeling safe and secure. If you don't feel safe and secure within, 
Nothing that you receive is going to make you feel safe and secure. That's one of the reasons for greed. Besides the fact that it's selfishness, there are some people who are greedy because they're just outright selfish, but right. there are some people who are way too focused on material things and way too focused on getting more and more and more because they've never taken the time to feel safe and secure within. So they feel that money is the only way they're going to feel secure and they don't feel like they ever have enough of it. And that's to the detriment of the rest of their lives, literally. So I think it's important that you spend time learning about these, these chakras, learning about you, learning about what you're made of so that you can begin to know what is safe and secure without anything else being added to you, money, job, whatever. What makes you feel secure just by yourself? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that, Allison. (laughs) I really appreciate it. (laughs) But um, that's pretty much it. Um, The reason, one of the reasons that I wanted to do this particular show is, um, of course, I talk about chakras every opportunity that I get. But I find that... um, one, very few people are familiar with the chakra system. And then two, not only are they not familiar with it, they are not um, making the connection between the chakra system and everyday life or the chakra system and their current situation. Mm -hmm. So with doing this particular topic, I wanted to be able to kind of bring that together so you all could see the direct connection between the chakras, how it applies to your life every day, and also how it applies to the mental and emotional wellness. So um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, Hey, Bobby. Let me see. Bobby. Hey, Renee. Thank you all for watching. Um, Again, if you all have any questions or any comments, please sure to put them below and we will address them. And if you feel um, compelled to please share the video, Um, this information may be beneficial, not only for yourself, but for other, you know, individuals as well or for your friends and your family. Now um, moving on to the next chakra, which is your sacral chakra. That particular chakra is our emotional chakra and is associated with, of course, our emotions, our feelings, um, creativity and sexuality and um, pretty much our relationships with other people. Now, um, the way that particular chakra, of course, it's our emotional chakra, so it's directly connected to our emotions. If we never learn to effectively manage our emotions, like for instance, you may, if something happens, you may not be angry about the situation, you may just be a little perturbed, but Um, If somebody, you know, comes by and says something and says you're angry, then it's just like, okay, am I really angry or am I allowing this to really bother me uh, more than it really should? And I think a lot of times we really, you know, misplace our feelings and emotions because we really don't know how to feel about it. It's just that we know we don't feel good. Um, there's a lot of ways or a lot of different ways to not feel good about a situation instead of just always being angry about it. Mm -hmm. And the more we learn to um, differentiate between one type of negative feeling and the other, then we can properly manage those particular feelings. And when we're able to properly manage those feelings, then we're able to deal with them accordingly. Because every situation that doesn't make us feel good doesn't mean we got to go off on everybody. We don't have to go off in every situation. We don't have to use um, very artsy language or colorful language, you know, for every situation. Sometimes all we need is a facial expression. And that says everything that needs to be said. And that can be the end of that particular situation. But no, some of us got to go too far. Some of us got to do the most. And every situation doesn't call for us doing the most. Um, When it comes to, you know, our sexuality, um, a lot of us really feel like um, we're not as in touch with ourselves because we don't properly know how to really navigate it. All we know is, okay, it's supposed to be secretive. You're supposed to do this, but you're not supposed to do this. And there's so many rules and regulations and, stipulations and boundaries and everything when it comes to us and our sexuality but it's just like why are you allowing everybody else to identify that part of you when that should be something that 
you know, you make those rules and you decide what you're comfortable comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. And again, you know, us in our emotional um, states, especially when it comes to relationships, has a lot to do with that. Your partner may feel like, oh, a threesome is great and it's cool. And, you know, I'm open to that. But then you're not because, you know, that's not you don't go beyond that particular boundary. But now y'all in an argument and you don't know if y'all going to be together because neither one of you have really effectively, you know, managed your emotions when it comes to that particular situation and the relationship that you're currently in. So um, that's just a small example of the sacral chakra and um, how it connects to our mental and our emotional wellness. So I'm just going to kind of leave it there and let Allison touch on that a little bit. Yeah, so one of the ways to know that you may need to spend some time focusing on this particular chakra is, you know, as Ruby mentioned, the way that you're communicating. And, you know, just like she said, sometimes you need to use less words than you actually do. Sometimes you may be using profanity when you don't necessarily have to. Sometimes you may just need to give a look. And one way to know that you you have a particular issue in this area is, if you're constantly being told that you don't know how to talk to people. Now, if you are constantly told by more than one person and the people don't know each other, but you keep hearing the same thing, that's a sign that you may have an issue. And it it could be related to maybe, you know, you grew up like a lot of us did where you're supposed to be seen and not heard. You were always Mm -hmm. taught that having your own opinion wasn't necessarily something that you were allowed to have just because you didn't happen to, reach reach the age of maturity as it were so during those formative years and those developmental years where you should have been allowed to be guided into how to communicate with respect you didn't get that and so as a result you may just not know how to communicate you may think that sarcasm is the answer you may think that the silent treatment is the answer you may think that putting other people down is the answer and you constantly have people who say you just don't know how to talk to people Or you don't know the value of silence. You know, there are some battles, there are some arguments where if you've already said what you needed to say, if you've already done what you needed to do, if you've already conveyed what you needed to convey, and you notice that nothing is necessarily changing at that point, it's okay to just not say anything else. There's a difference between Mm -hmm. trying to prove your point and then trying to beat someone over the head with it. If they don't agree, if they don't want to do whatever it is that they're asking you to do, they're not going to do it. And so that doesn't mean that you're now a prisoner to them being indifferent to whatever you ask for. It means that you now have the decision of whether you're going to stay in that condition or leave. You always have that option. And so that's why silence is always another option that you can focus on. But if you find that silence is something you can't do, you feel like you just have to have the last word. You feel like you just have to, my, my sisters, you feel like you just have to have closure. Those are signs that you may need this particular area uh, worked on within you. And on the sexual side, and I don't know from a man's perspective, so of course I'm not going to talk about that, but <laughs> from, a, from a woman's perspective, I, I know a lot of us are still having sex with people that we don't feel a connection to anymore. And if I can be really adult about it, your body is telling you that it has disconnected. You know, right. vacation ain't lasting like it used to and you're not feeling it like you used to. And sometimes you're just sitting there waiting for it to be over. And y'all know who I'm talking about. It may not be everybody, but somebody out here knows what I'm saying. If you know that you're mm-hmm. if you know your body, if you taking the time to spend time knowing your body, if you notice that you used to not need any extra lubrication the entire time and now you drying up in five minutes, that's a sign. That doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It's a sign that you are having a a lack of connection with the person that you're with. And that's something that you want to pay attention to. You don't need KY. You need some healing and you need some communication and you need a discussion. Yeah, I said it. I said it. I didn't cuss. See, that's that. That's that spicy chicken. Them spicy chicken (laughs) I think I'm going to stop there. I think y'all get my point. But just 
Pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> we got you, Allison. We got you. <laughs> All right. But she, <laughs> she absolutely has a point. I mean, that's all we saying. She has a point. <laughs> and oh, have this on in church. <laughs> and now on to the next thing. The solar plexus <laughs> chakra. The solar plexus chakra is our willpower chakra. And of course, is associated with our self-confidence, um, our self-esteem and how we feel about ourselves and our relationship with ourselves. And of course... A lot of us, um, we have we struggle with self love and self empowerment and self help and self care. And if you don't love yourself enough to take care of you first and then take care of everybody else, then right now I know a lot of you have firsthand experience uh, as far as how that's going to affect you mentally and emotionally. You lose yourself. You well, you lose yourself in these relationships. You lose yourself to your children. And again, let me just reiterate, you know, what Allison says sometimes. We're not saying be all about yourself and ignore everybody else. No, what we're saying is you have to be your best self in order to be what you need to be to everybody else. That includes your spouse, your children, your family, your employer, your employees, or whoever it is. But when you don't um, allow yourself to effectively manage your emotions and build your self-esteem, and if you don't have self-confidence in yourself, if you don't love yourself, then one, you allow other people to run over you. And when you allow other people to run over you, just like they feel like your feelings don't matter, then you're going to feel like your feelings don't matter. Mm -hmm. You have to start building, and that's another, you know, um, live video that we did about um, um, setting the standard with yourself. You have to set those particular standards with yourself on how everybody else needs to treat you because you treat yourself this way. Um, if you know, if you don't feel confident about yourself and you don't have you don't have a high level of self esteem, how can you expect anybody else to be confident in anything that you're doing? They won't. How can you expect anybody else to think highly of you when you don't think highly of yourself? And what that does is mentally that breaks us down because instead of us defining who we are, which miseducation itself, definitely go back and watch that one. <laughs> but if you are not defining who you are and whatnot, then you're allowing other people to do it. And if other people think you're trash, then guess how that's going to affect you mentally and emotionally? Yeah, That's going to tear you up. And then once it tears you up and you don't know how to repair that, then guess what type of situation you're going to be in? You're going to be so far in this hole that just learning to cope in that particular hole that you've put yourself in is more comforting than you trying to heal yourself because right. it's going to take, you feel like it's going to take entirely too much work for you to move beyond that. And you're you you you're gonna become complacent in that, and you're gonna find yourself in the same situation year after year after year, and then you're wondering why you haven't found that person to love you, or you're wondering why you are not married and whatnot. You're attracting exactly what you're reflecting. You can't be mad at anybody but yourself, and that's pretty much all I got to say about that. Allison. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, the biggest thing with me in terms of asking or knowing what you want and, and being able to, to set those boundaries, set your standards for self, I have, you know, two different ways that I want people to look at it. Now, while I, I do agree with what, what Ruby just mentioned in terms of, you know, attracting what you are and things like that, I do also want people to understand that there are predators out there. And so it doesn't necessarily matter how much you heal yourself. If a predator decides that they want to give it a shot, they're going to give it a shot. So right. if you if you run into a narcissist, if you run into someone who has, uh, especially if you're a healer, if you have a healing spirit, if you keep you know dealing with broken people, I want you to understand that you can't stop broken people 
from being att attracted to you. You can only right. pay attention to not being attracted to all of them thinking that you're meant to help them. You're meant to heal them. You're meant to give and give and give to make them feel that's not your role either. And so it's exactly. important that you know exactly how to play that, that position. And when we're talking about you, you know, not filling yourself up and, and, and not setting the standard with self so that you know exactly what you do want versus what you don't don't, this is where your tribe also has to come into play. Mm -hmm. If uh, let's just say I'll talk about a situation with a very old job that I had. I'm a, I'm a corporate trainer by profession. And one of the things that I noticed as I got better with the training piece is that the universe kept bringing men and women to me who were younger and hadn't necessarily held a quote unquote professional job before. So I've trained people who were fresh out of juvie. I've trained people who, I uh, had never left their their block, literally, of, of town that they grew up on. I've trained those people. And so a lot of times uh, with this one particular situation, there was a young lady who would always come in wearing a dress. And she was really doing her best to try to look the part. But she didn't understand the value of undergarments. And what I mean by that are, you know, girdles or slips and, and things like that. And so I noticed that a lot of people would pick on her but no one made the effort to teach her. And so the reason that I want to bring that particular situation up is this is where you have to make sure that you have the right people around you. You want to make sure that there's people around you who know what you know and can remind you of it. But you also want to have people around you who know what you don't know and are more apt to show you if you're willing to learn than pick on you for it. Um, I just put up a post a couple of days ago about the typical strong woman in the family that everyone goes to. And I mentioned that you're killing her. You're killing her because you're dumping, you have everybody in the family dumping problems on this one person. And so one of my sisters, she did put a comment up. I don't think I've had a chance to respond yet, but she put up a comment that says that that person also has to learn how to push back. And she was absolutely right. The problem is sometimes we're not taught how to say no. And so when we make the distinction of saying, you know, there are some times where people are deemed a strong person in the family and they just accept that role because that's what they've seen. So who's there to tell her, hey, you know, you don't have to do this, right? Let's go out. Why don't you go do something for you? No, don't worry about the phone ringing. They, they can handle that. Sometimes you have to be taught what you need to know by right. someone that you can trust. And if you just have people around who want to take and take, um, every time you run into a situation and you may tell them you're trying not to drink anymore, you got a bunch of people around you that want to give you the first shot when you've had a bad day, you also have to check your circle. If they're not helping you heal, then by default, they're helping you self-destruct. And it's important to know that there is no gray area when it comes to that. You either have people who want you to grow or you have people who don't because there's no right. such thing as standing still. You're growing or you're falling behind. So that's all I've got. For now. <laughs> For now. <laughs> okay. Now, after the solar plexus chakra is a heart chakra, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, your heart chakra is associated with your ability to your ability to love and be compassionate and not only be able to be that way, but be able to receive that. And um for this particular one. Uh, the one thing that stands out to me most, of course, with me being on social media is people are always talking about relationships and what is love and I'm tired of love and all of this, you know, kind of stuff. First of all, um, <laughs> love is not necessarily well. everybody has their own definition of love. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. But. You have to understand that if you are not love and you don't exemplify what love is, how can you expect somebody to give that to you? And not only that, if you're not giving it to yourself, how can you expect anybody else to give it to you? If you don't have a clear definition or a clear idea of what your idea of love is, you don't know how to give it. And on the flip side of that, you don't know how to receive it. Mm -hmm. So 
instead of focusing on, you know, not being able to get it from somebody else, focus on giving it to yourself. And it's not going to happen overnight. You can't be like, you know what? I don't know how to love today. And then all of a sudden tomorrow you get it. You know how to do it. No, it's a process. Um, Learning to love yourself has to do with self-care. It has to do with self-healing. It's connected to your um, solar plexus chakra, which is, you know, of course, um, the chakra that's associated with your willpower in the relationship that you have with yourself. Mm-hmm. So if everybody is out here, you know, searching for love and wanting to, you know, receive it from somebody else, but nobody's getting it or everybody has a distorted idea of what it is, or either you're not willing to budge on what your idea of love is and your potential, the potential person that's out there for you, um, they may see it differently from you then just think about how that's now affecting you mentally and emotionally. It's getting to the point where a lot of people don't believe in marriage. Everybody got a side chick, everybody got a side dude, and Everybody is everywhere with the idea of love. And it's just like, okay, so what do we do now? We just follow what everybody else is doing. Right. Which is pretty much what it looks like on my timeline because, um, and that's not to say that there are not, you know, successful relationships and marriages that are full of love and full of compassion and full of understanding and everything. But we not we not worried about those because they're not the ones on their timeline complaining about not being able to find it or you know asking questions about it. Yeah. The only thing they're doing is living in it and being in it and mm-hmm. you know being happy about it. So with the heart chakra that's how you know it's directly connected with your um mental and emotional wellness because if your heart chakra isn't healed or it needs some healing, then you're not going to have the best idea about what love is, or you're not going to know how to give it or receive it from somebody else who genuinely wants to give it to you. Mm -hmm. You'd rather go chase after this person that's ignoring you as opposed to, you know, trying to pay attention and just see what this person that's always sending you that good morning, beautiful, or that good morning, handsome text message, or the person that's always checking on you every day. Uh, The last time I checked, that's how people show that they love you by checking on you and that they care about you and that they care about your well-being. That's right. So I'm just going to leave that there. (laughs) Allison, tag you (laughs) it. Now, this is my (laughs) chakra right here. So here's what I want to say. What I want to say is some of you, your heart chakra was damaged before you even knew what it was. And a lot of us are walking around thinking that love is something that's supposed to hurt. Love is something that is supposed to make you uh, panic, be anxious. uh, And you don't understand that what you are calling love is actually called a, what is the psychological term? Um, I can't think of it right now, but you're actually, you're not in love. You're addicted to the drama. You're Mm -hmm. addicted to the up and down. You're a a arousal jag. That's what it's called. You're addicted to the constant roller coaster of emotions. You're addicted to y'all argue, then you make up and then you break up and then you bring other people around each other to piss each other off. So y'all can get back together and make up again. You're thinking that that's love. Part of that is also because of what you're choosing to allow yourself to watch on TV and listen to on the radio. But mm-hmm. in either case, you're thinking that love is supposed to be this up and down roller coaster. And I know at least a couple, a couple that I have talked to this week that I've had to, you know, help direct them to how to reprogram. When you do meet someone who genuinely loves you, if you have come from a situation where everything has always been up and down and in and out and full of anxiety and full of all of these different roller coaster of emotions, the person you meet this for you, you're going to be bored for a minute. And it's because they're not giving you all of these different extremes. They're steady. They're steady Mm -hmm. and they're slow and they're methodical and they're consistent. And none of that is going to feel foreign to you. So you're going to think 
you're going to make the mistake of calling this person thirsty. You're going to make the mistake of calling this person dull. You're going to make the mistake of friend zoning them. You're going to make the mistake of taking what they're doing and abusing it because you're not used to having it, or you're just going to self-sabotage it and push them away. And so one of the things that I think the most important thing with dealing with this chakra, if you have issues with love, understand sometimes it may just not be your turn and you just got to thug it out. That's always an option. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times I think the universe is giving you a chance to really show that you're willing to relearn what love is. Us being adults never meant we know everything. Right. Us healing from things the way that we think we've healed from them, it doesn't mean that we're now ready to go out and have what we're meant to have. You have to be willing to understand and acknowledge what I think love is, is drama. I don't want drama because drama keeps me crying at night. Drama keeps me yelling and screaming and crying and drama keeps me not knowing how he or she feels about me. I don't want that. What I want is what I give. And if what I'm giving is consistent and methodical and intentional towards one person and one only, that's what you need to wait for. The problem is we, we get tired of waiting. We get frustrated. Mm -hmm. We get lonely. We get sick of seeing engagement after engagement and marriage. After, we get tired of seeing that and we decide we can just be patient and make it work with someone but when you're being patient and making it work with somebody who doesn't want it to work or doesn't know that their definition of love is completely jacked up, then you just run up in a situation where it's just not working out. So make sure that your definition is right. Make sure that, what the, oh, I'm sorry. No, I was wondering, I was like, like what is, <sighs> make sure your definition of love is right. And make sure if it's not right, you're willing to acknowledge it and learn how to reprogram your brain. That That's the most important thing. While this dog is out here losing his mind, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I was wondering what that was. I was like, well, I know it's not on this side. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, everything Allison said. Um, yeah, that kind of just threw me off. But... Um, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for tuning in. If you have yes. any questions, please be sure to comment below. Um, Desiree says, um, the hardest part is finding that person you can trust. Um, this is, you know, just my input about trust. Um, I don't put my trust in people. I put trust in myself. The reason I put trust in myself is because I exercise my discernment and I trust the, my intuition to tell me who's for me and who's not. And when I'm told this person is good for you, then that's me trusting myself and understanding that that person is supposed to be beneficial for me. And then, of course, if along the way somebody or that person does something then, of course, my intuition is going to tell me, OK, they've served their purpose. Now it's time to let them go. Now it's time to release them. And um, like I said, that has absolutely nothing to do with me trusting them, but more so me trusting myself. Um, Allison, do you have any input on that? Yeah, I do think that it's important to trust your intuition. I think that that, <clears throat> excuse me, first and foremost should be something that we do pay attention to. Mm -hmm. I do want to add that even with intuition, what I try to keep in mind is with me being a flawed individual, my, intu my intuition may not necessarily fail me, but there may be times that I don't necessarily hear what it has to say. Right. And so in those instances, I do think I, not necessarily that I put my trust in people, because I, I think you do have a good point there. You should put your trust in yourself. But I do also think that one of the ways that we have to make sure that we're not disconnected from people, I, I we, we did a topic on being, uh, con you know, always connected but never attached. And so hmm. I, I try to, you know, follow that philosophy. I like the way that Ruby explained that. 
But I also think that we do have to focus on that connected part. And sometimes, um, not with either one of us, but I do know that there are some people who practice self-love and, and intuition to the point that they are actually disconnected from everybody. They don't want to listen to things. They don't want to, if their intuition doesn't tell them, then they don't listen. But one of the things that intuition can do is connect you to your answer. And mm -hmm. so you need to be open to the fact that you may be asking the universe for something that may not directly come from you. It's going to be connect. You're going to connect to it. And so for that reason, I think you do need to understand that once your intuition, for example, lets you know that there's a person you can trust. Also understand that the universe has let you know that you can connect to that person. Know that there's mm -hmm. a reason and don't think that there's going to be, an, an, there will never be a chance where you get an answer from the person the universe said you could connect to. It's not always about you receiving the answer because if we always get what we need from within, we will suffer disconnects with people and we do still need to be connected to people. That's my opinion. So right. that, that's what I would add to it. Okay. Well, thank you for your comment, Desiree. We really appreciate it. Um, let's see the throat chakra. Um, of course, our throat chakra is associated with us being able to speak our truth and effective communication. Uh, I'm just going to leave that there because <laughs> I can talk about effective communication all day, but I'm not. <laughs> but I see it all the time, like on social media, especially Facebook, where we don't effectively communicate. And because we don't effectively communicate, we don't effectively understand or, or listen or realize that the person that we're communicating with, for one, is communi communicating from their level of understanding and experience. And then two, you're responding from your level of understanding and experience. Right. And there's just this huge disconnect there. And it's just like, just because they feel and think and you know, rationalize differently from you doesn't make them wrong. And that doesn't make you right. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people get in their feelings. Well, actually, I know a lot of people get in their feelings, <laughs> but people disagree with them mm -hmm. because it's, I don't know what it is. You know, I have no problem with people having a difference of opinion or a difference of point of view from, you know, from mine. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, okay, if you like vanilla because it is, okay, that's cool. I like cookies and cream because it is. All right, well, we can go both have ice cream. You can get your vanilla. I can get my cookies and cream, and we can have a good day. Exactly. We don't have to go back and forth about that. No. <laughs> just like, you know, my hair wrap. I like this hair wrap. Allison like her hair wrap. I'm not going <laughs> to say nothing to her. I'm not going to get petty and savage with her because she want to wear a black one. <laughs> You know what, Allison? As a matter of fact, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm playing. <laughs> See, it's it's okay. It is. It's completely okay, and it's just little things like that where we allow people to get under our skin. And now y'all arguing. I didn't say arguing. I said arguing <laughs> because they spoke their truth and you don't agree with it or you spoke yours and you're not understanding why they don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. It's completely okay. Don't let the difference, but don't let because somebody thinks differently and feels differently than you, you know, get you, get your underwear and your panties in a bunch. Mm -hmm. And then now you in a bad mood and now your whole day messed up. And now you on Facebook, you know, telling everybody and everybody looking at you like, mm, block. <laughs> you right. Know? And it's just like, come on now. The connection between our throat chakra and our mental and emotional wellness is because sometimes, you know, the way we think is wrong sometimes or it's not right in every situation. Mm -hmm. And that's completely okay. Just, just agree to disagree. And you know what? If somebody's saying something that you just don't completely agree with, just block them. Facebook is not the real life. I mean, it's real to an extent because we're real people and we use it. But some of y'all just take it too far. Again, in this situation, some of y'all just be doing the most. Stop doing the most. Do nothing sometimes <laughs> other than block and unfollow or unfriend. 
And not only can you do that on social media, you can do that in real life too, you know. <laughs> For real. Yeah. So, Allison? <laughs> you know, I'm going to answer your question. The, the first part that you, the first question you said was, you didn't understand why people got in their feelings so much when they were disagreed with. And it actually mm -hmm. goes back to self-worth, which is right back at the root chakra. So you have people who have literally built their self-worth around their opinion and what they think. And so when you see people get upset, yes, sometimes it's arrogance, but other times mm -hmm. it's because the person doesn't understand that they have someone who's who is disagreeing with their opinion. They have internalized it to feel like that person is rejecting them. And because Ooh. they feel like that person is rejecting them, one of the first things that you'll do is get defensive. And mm -hmm. so that's what we see going on. People are getting defensive because they don't understand that their opinion is just that. It has no bearing on their self-worth. It has no bearing on their self-value. It has no bearing on whether they are deemed worthy or not. It's just an opinion and they haven't learned how to feel safe and secure. Like you said at the beginning, they haven't learned how to feel safe and secure on their own before they go out and decide to give their opinion, knowing if everyone disagrees with me, I'm still worthy. I'm still valuable. Right. My opinion is still important and it's not going to be discounted because other people disagree. They haven't taken the time to do that. And that's one of the things, you know, again, that healing that root chakra will help. It will help you get to the point where you're like, like what Ruby said, okay, well, I like cookies and cream. You like vanilla and let's go to the, let's go to I get some ice cream together. You do your thing. Mm -hmm. I do mine. And no one feels like they're being judged or being deemed as less than someone else. When you're right. really not being deemed as less than, than someone else. It's just that you have internalized it to feel that way. And that's not mm -hmm. something that anyone else can fix. And so that that is the, the, the great thing about the, the throat chakra, learning that communication, but also, you know, seeing how all of the chakras run together. That root chakra right. will help you to speak through your throat chakra without feeling defensive. It's, it's just a fact of life. Exactly. Yep. So our, our hopefully the goal of this particular live session was to start making that connection for you all. And we are hoping that we're making the connection for you. Mm -hmm. And if not, then just go back and watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now our third eye chakra. Of course, our third eye chakra is associated with our um, us being able to follow our intuition mm -hmm. and see in the bigger picture and just living beyond the moment. And Wow, this one is directly connected to our emotions and our um, mental thoughts and whatnot. Because a lot of the times when things, well, a lot of the time when things happen, we don't, we focus so much on what's going on now, and we get so mentally and emotionally involved and engulfed in what's going on now that we forget we have to live tomorrow, that we have to continue past this moment and that this moment doesn't last the rest of our lives. And let's say, for example, if today you lost your job, yes, you, of course, you have to spend time in that moment mentally and emotionally, but you can't stay there. And you have to eventually get to the point where you realize and understand that, OK, I can either continue to be, you know, upset about this and I can continue to spiral, you know, downward in this uh, depressive state. But wait a minute, I can't keep doing that because I still got to, you know, I still have to have somewhere to live tomorrow and the day after that and the week after that and the month after that. So I can't stay here. I have to move beyond this particular moment. And maybe this happening is a push for me to, you know, go ahead and start doing my own business full time. Or maybe I didn't like that job anyway and it was working. But now it's time for me to really pursue what I really want to do or focus on my career or go back to school or whatever the case may be. But, you know, with that third eye chakra, as also with intuition, follow it. 
it's been plenty of times your intuition has told you something is not for you. Somebody is not for you and you didn't listen. And now you're an emotional wreck because now you're dealing with a cheater or now you're dealing with somebody that mentally abuses you or somebody that verbally or physically abuses you. And it's just like, why are you, you know, mentally and emotionally allowing this to happen when you have everything that you need built into you to tell you, you know, to give you that red flag. Hey, you might want to, you know, hold off on that. Or either you are um, in a situation where you're just focused on everything bad. You know, a lot of people always claim in the struggle. It's like, why are you always, I mean, what do you expect? That's all you claiming the struggle. So you're going to continue to struggle, right? It's like the struggle doesn't last forever. Now for you, if you want to keep talking about it, then, you know, that might be your reality, but it's not mine because I'm not always claiming the struggle. I don't even claim the struggle, you know? So, you know, pretty much just with your third eye intuition, listen to it when it tells you what's for you and what's not. And just also understand that, just because you may not be in this best situation now doesn't mean you're always going to be in that situation. That's right. That's all I got, Allison. You know, the biggest thing for me, I want you guys to take away from the third eye chakra. Understand, like Ruby said, it's designed to help you see beyond today. But mm -hmm. I want you to go a step further and understand that that third eye chakra is sometimes, like, it, it, well, I'm not going to say sometimes, if it shows you a vision, if it shows you something that's going to happen, it's showing right. you what's going to happen. So you have that to hold on to as you go through the process to get there. And the reason I want that, you know, to really sink in is because a lot of times we can have a dream that we own a business. We can have a dream that we own a home and we can see it visual so vividly. It's like we're there. And that could be the universe saying that that is going to be your home. But we have to remember we are so short-sighted, we think that when we get these visions, it means it's going to happen tomorrow. And sometimes you get the vision first because the universe knows how hard the process is going to be, and they give you the vision to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So if you get the vision, it's the universe saying, look, you, you might go through some hell, but I want you to see the end result so that you'll go through the hell and don't take up residence there. Right. And that's where we talk about the struggle. Number one, you don't have to talk about it. Let that be the story that you tell when you're out of it. Because if you keep talking about the struggle while you're in the struggle, you continue to make that your reality. You continue to manifest that in your life. So as you're going through the struggle, you should be talking about getting out of it more than the fact that you're in it. Then when you're right. out, you can go back and tell people, yes, I went through this struggle and these are the steps that I took to get out so I can help you because I can't help you if I'm still in it. Mm -hmm. Talking about it doesn't make me more real or more down or more any of these other things. It just makes me real silly to keep talking about a situation that I'm ready to get out of. And so the third eye chakra, I think, is, is our protection and our, our protection from hurt and our mm. protection from the process. Because if anybody has really, really gone through a process, and I think Ruby has, if anybody has mm -hmm. really, really gone through a process, there are certain parts where you're like, you know what? I don't even know why I wanted this. <laughs> I don't even know why I wanted to do it. I don't even know why I wanted to pray for it. I don't even know yeah. why I wanted to do any of this. I don't know why I did it. But if you get the vision at the end, that's the universe saying, keep coming. I knew it was going to get hard, which is why I let you see the end first. I know it's going to get hard. Just keep coming. Get out of that. And so I think that's what the third eye chakra is for. And that's one of the ones, if you don't focus on any other chakra, and I think that you still need to focus on all of them, but this one can really help you change your life because you won't give up. So that's all I got. Yes. <laughs> yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> and now... We come to our crown chakra. Hey, Jennifer, thank you for tuning in. Thanks, Thank you to everyone that's tuned in um, this Sunday. Um, we really appreciate it. Um, if you all are just now tuning in or catching the end of it, yeah, we'll be ended soon so you can go back and watch the whole thing. Right. Um, just like Jennifer says, she says, um, I'm just coming in and can't wait to go back and watch from the beginning. Yes, and definitely tell us what you think. 
Uh, we want everybody to let us know what you think. Um, of course, we've been doing this for going on five months now, and we want feedback. We want input because we want to make this better. Mm -hmm. um, the last chakra is our crown chakra, and that particular chakra is associated is our spirituality chakra. Um, our connection to the spirit world and our connection or the um, us being able to um, work with our higher self and our lower self. Um, and y'all already know we're dealing with spirituality and religion. I pretty much just keep it straight ahead because <laughs> y'all, some people just really get emotional when they, when it comes to the spiritual versus religious yes. talk mm -hmm. and that kind of just goes back to that effective communication, agree to disagree, but, you know, still treat each other with love and respect, even though you may have those differences. I'm just going to leave that part of it there. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the higher self versus your lower self, of course, you know, I refer to your higher self as that person, the ultimate being that you allow yourself to become that wants to own their own time, their own time that wants to be healthy and happy and healed and be the ultimate version of you versus your lower self, which is that person that you allow to be drama filled, that you allow to continue to, you know, live in hurt and live in pain and live in fear and do everything that, you know, you're not supposed to do, but you just do it anyway. Right. Um, of course, there's a place for both. Mm hmm. I'm not going to say that some I'm not going to say that I'm going to sit here and pass up a slice of pizza every time, you know, because I like pizza. Right. And sometimes I will eat me some pizza. Mm -hmm. I might ask you to throw, you know, throw some extra veggies on there so I don't feel as bad. <laughs> well, really, I'm not going to feel bad about it, because if I'm hungry, then I'm going to eat. And right, I'm always right. I eat. <laughs> and I'm giving to my higher self. See how this works out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know mentally and emotionally um when we are doing those things that we strive to achieve and that best version of us that makes us feel so good that makes it peaceful for us that makes us happy that makes us deal with life in such you know a, a much more positive way than if we are always living in our lower self where we're always having to clap back at somebody or we always feel like we have to have this um this negative outlook or we feel like we always have to get an attitude with somebody or you know whatever the case may, may be but understanding the direct connection between your crown chakra and your mental and your emotional wellness is just understanding that you're pretty much choosing you're either going to choose to be better or you're not you're either going to choose to be better mentally or you're going to choose to be better emotionally or you're going to allow yourself to continue to suffer. You're going to allow yourself to continue to have this, you know, toxic mental state. You're going to continue to be in that depression or in that stressful state or in that, you know, place of anxiety or whatever it is. It could be just because you're jealous and now you feel like, you know, you want to put somebody on blast because her hair longer than yours or her bundles better than yours or her <laughs> afro bigger than yours. It's just like, really? Like, again, block. You ain't even got to look at her afro. You ain't even got to look at her bundles. Just, just block them. Then you ain't got to worry about it. But, y'all, we got to do better. That's pretty yeah. much all I got for that. You know, I'm <laughs> trying to stay within our time constraints, you know, <laughs> We cool. We run it a little bit over, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it is. If y'all need to get this message, y'all gonna get it. That's Whether right. Whether y'all get it sixty minutes or seventy minutes, you gonna get it, <laughs> Allison. <laughs> so here, here's what I have to say about the crown chakra. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say this, and I'm just speaking from my experiences. As I've heard Ruby say several times, you cannot debate my experience, and so there's no need to debate it, and I'm not gonna debate it with you. But it has been my experience that religion kept me from my higher self. Not spirituality, but religion. And I'm a very big proponent of seeking God, not religion. Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that God is the one who created you. Islam didn't. Judaism didn't. 
The Jane religion didn't. Christianity didn't. God created you. And it was my experience that I spent so much time being told about religion that I was missing God completely. The only time I thought about God was, oh, I messed up. Is he going to get me? Oh, I messed up. Is he going to get me? I was more afraid of him or her. I'm still researching. I was more afraid than uh, trusting. And so as you continue to search for God, by default, you're going to find your higher self. As you continue to search for God, there are going to be things that you just don't want to do anymore because they don't serve you. No one's going to have to tell you to do it. No one's going to have to scare you into saying it's a sin. You are not going to want to do it. And, and as all of us know, we don't really stop or start doing anything until we want to do it. Right. We can only be bullied into it to the extent that we do it for a minute. And then we eventually revert back if we have not decided that we want to start or stop. So the importance of this chakra is when we're born, regardless of the debate on how we were born or what we know or whatever, just know when you're born, you can't talk, you can't walk, you can't feed yourself. By default, we are always growing physically. It's cool to watch us learn how to crawl and then walk and then run and then jog. And it's cool to watch us go from babbling to speaking full word. All of that's beautiful, but there is a mental process that also has to occur. And mm -hmm. that's what this crown chakra helps you to do. It helps you to elevate yourself out of the pettiness, out of worrying about the bundles, out of the natural versus relaxed nonsense, out of the, the braid versus weave. Not, it, it, it allows you to get through all of that nonsense and just say, what serves me so I right. can serve others? That's exactly. really all it's about. So if you're still finding that you are having these little petty discussions and you're still trying to be deep about Black Panther and who should watch it versus who shouldn't. And you're trying to be, you know, you're having an issue. Well, you know, bundles is a sign that you don't love yourself when it could really just be that she don't want to do her hair. I totally right. understand that. You think I'm not getting braised the minute I can? <laughs> Say something. <laughs> okay. So. How about we focus more on our higher selves than trying to point out the lowliness that we think in others? That's what the crown chakra says to me. I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to focus on my higher self. And I'm going to focus on how right. I can lift other people up with my knowledge instead of putting them down with my arrogance. So that's all I got. Right. And man, we, we talk about bundles and weave because we're women. But we see all out here. We see all out here too. Talking about beard this and no beard that and right. beard yeah, you know what? I like muscles. I like tattoos. I like beards. I like if you ain't got no beard, if you ain't got no muscles, if you ain't got whatever I'm attracted to. If you soul food, we good. And soul I food you to don't be have no. And loyal. Be right. And loyal. And just, you know, I don't care about height on five feet, but just I, I, don't be five feet. You can't even be five three. I just need. <laughs> can you be consistent and loyal and honest? That is really all I need. I'm sorry. I just had to put that out there. Yeah, we just, you know, <laughs> you know, we see y'all guys out here doing it too. So we just saying, you know, even though we're talking from a woman's perspective, we see y'all guys out here doing it too. Yep. But of course, that's all seven chakras with all seven of the main chakras. Mm -hmm. But just to sum up everything, as far as the connection between, um, the uh oh what was i doing oh the connection between the chakras and mental and emotional wellness <clears throat> pretty much is when you are familiar with your chakras you are familiar with what your energy feels like versus what you know what's your energy and what doesn't belong to you because it belongs to other people um then you know how to recognize when healing is needed that means pretty much when you go into a situation and something tells you, wait a minute, before you move forward, take care of this, take care of it. You're able to effectively control and manage your thoughts and your emotions. And in being able to effectively manage your thoughts and emotions, then you can prevent mental and emotional buildup. And that's pretty much where you're just allowing you're you're pretty much just burying your feelings and emotions and you're not addressing them at the time that they need to be addressed and eventually 
you can only bury it for so long before you just explode and it just completely takes over you and now you are in a situation where you're dealing with a mental illness <laughs> depression doesn't happen overnight depression happens over time stress happens over time you mm -hmm. um you get anxiety over a um a period of time mm -hmm. but if you would have been effectively dealing and managing your thoughts and your emotions and everything along the way then you wouldn't get to the point where you feel like you're just so deep in this hole that you can't get out you're not you know snapping at everybody you're not starving yourself because you just don't have the energy to eat because mentally and emotionally your body has just shut down or either you're just dealing with so much at one time stop doing that understand what your chakras are understand how to um deal with them understand how to balance and heal them and trust me in the long run is going to help you so much more and this is not just as an adult children can learn this as well you're not in the situation that you're in because you ju it just all of a sudden started when you became an adult. No, mm -hmm. some of this stuff you've been dealing with from the day you got here. Mm -hmm. From, you know, from elementary school, from junior high school, from middle school, high school. And the reason that you really can't let it go is because you've been holding on to it for so long. Stop that. You don't have to deal with it. If at this point you are dealing with it, it's because you're choosing to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to leave that there because I know our time is getting <laughs> low. Um, let me see. Um, and that's pretty much all I got. Allison, you got some last words? You know, the only thing I want to say is just to piggyback off of what, what your last statement was. I just want people to understand that no one wants you to stay where you are if they see that it's hurting you, even if you don't see that it's hurting you. Mm -hmm. And all, all the things that we're discussing with the chakras, with mental health, with mental education, emotional health, all of these are designed to show you, you, and to show you the areas that you may have held on to because you think they're safe. I know a lot of you are emotionally unavailable because you think it's safe. I know a lot of you are pushing people away or using people or whatever because you think it's safe. As long as it's not you, you don't care if it's anyone else. And so in this, what we're discussing here is how to get rid of that because right. you not seeing that it's hurting you doesn't mean that it's not. And it doesn't mean that it never will, but being, being mindful of it and making a decision to do something about it now will keep you from having regret later because the day will come where you will figure out, you weren't doing what you could for your higher self or for those who loved you or tried to love you, but you're going to run out of time to do anything about it. And so right. the purpose of learning you through your chakras, through spirituality, through all of these things is for you to just heal from what was done to you, from what you've done to others, from what you want to happen versus what actually has. It's designed to heal you so you can say going forward, that stuff is my past. It does not need to continue to come with me. So, that that was the last little bit that I had. Okay. Well, you know, while she was talking, and I was like, oh, Allison, we both got the dark fingernail polish going on, guys. <laughs> Great minds. <laughs> With white t-shirts and head wraps. Hey, <laughs> you got asking for your input. Don't you say not nothing. Don't say oh, a name, Lord. another thing. Here we go, but, say. <laughs> um, everyone, again, we want to thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Soul Sunday with Ruby and Allison. And, you know, this topic, um, I really enjoyed doing. So I'm thinking next week, Allison, um, because we talked a lot about personal stuff today. Next mm -hmm. week, I think we really need to do this topic again, but talk about it from a professional or from a business standpoint. Oh, good. Okay. Because I want people to understand not only does this um, affect us personally, but mm -hmm. as well as professionally. It does. Some of us in these workplaces, some of us are in the situations that we're in mentally and emotionally because of the workplace. It may mm -hmm. not have anything to do with being at home. It's all from work. That's right. So that's what we're going to talk about next week. Um, 
it, don't forget um the last tuesday of this month will be our second episode of happy healthy and healing with me myself and miss tara jackson uh, respect the queen llc yeah we, you got the mild and the spicy today you don't get the hot <laughs> that last tuesday of this month but um, make sure you check that out. That will be on March the 27th at 6.30 p.m., 7.30, I mean, 5.30 Central Time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all we got for, the, for today. I'm Ruby D, the Goddess Entrepreneur. If you want to follow me on my other social media, you can visit my website, www.thegoddessgrind.com. Um, you can also purchase both of my books there. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at um, Ruby D Artistry, R U B I, um, the letter D, and then Artistry. Um, you can find me on YouTube. Just search Ruby Davidson. And um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, Allison. All right, guys. So you can find me right here on Facebook as well under Allison Denise. Please go ahead and join my pages uh, for Be Still and Move, the HDL group and Allison Denise, as well as Rise Financial Education Group, where we're going to start talking about things that help you get better, restore, insure, invest, save, and enjoy. Um, you can also join our closed uh, Be Still and Move group on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter and Snapchat under Be Still and Move. And you can now find me under Instagram under not only I will be still and move, uh, but also Miss Allison Denise. I think I got everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh and yes we do have a facebook group for happy healthy and healing if you yes. want to join that group and um for this particular live you have to reference this live but um i do offer chakra consultations and if you reference this particular live video and um tell me what the topic was and one thing that you got from this particular live video, I will give you 20% off your consultation or your appointment, but you have to, well, you know, I'm not going to put a time frame on it. So if you reference this particular live and one things that, and one thing that resonated with you, then you will get 20% off your chakra consultation. Um, if you go online and just book it, it's not going to give you the 20% off. You have to contact me directly in order for me to um send you an invoice so that's all we got this week all we right. look forward to seeing you all next week and that's it allison <laughs> that, that's all i got that's, that's all, all we i got. got too i love you guys just enjoy your week i know right <laughs> now you know after this your week should start on a completely different note that's it you should. know mm -hmm. it should but <laughs> Peace, love, and light. We will see y'all next time. Bye-bye. Now, Allison, you know we got to keep smiling because it takes a minute. <laughs>